guys, welcome back to Let's Make This a Holiday Candy Story Time. And we're going to go down memory lane. So first I'm going to start on my husband's Uncle Ronnie makes a wonderful peanut brittle in the microwave. And we're not going to make peanut brittle because my husband likes macadamia nuts. So you can put any nuts in there you want. You can get cashews, pecans, peanuts, whatever you want. It's so easy in the microwave and it only takes a few minutes. And, you know, guys, why slave over the stove when you can use the microwave? I'm not a big microwave person, but hey. Now, to start out, we're going to need a large bowl. This is an 8-cup bowl. It needs to be microwave safe. Okay, guys, make sure it's dry. You do not want anything to seize. Candy is very temperamental. does not like moisture when it's not supposed to have it. Also, as you can see, I've measured stuff out. When you're making candy, you should have everything measured and ready before you start. Candy moves very quickly, so you don't want to be caught off guard. Okay, first of all, we're going to put a cup of sugar in our bowl. And we've already lined our, our pan. I like to use parchment paper. If you have foil, you can use foil and then butter it. I'm going to use parchment paper so I don't have to do that and add additional butter. Now we have a half a cup of carrot syrup here. We're going to add this in. Okay, got our carrot syrup that I spilled everywhere on my counter. So everything's sticky and I really dislike sticky things. Okay, so we got all of our stuff in. We got our sugar, we got our syrup, and we're going to put it in there. Guys, you don't need to reduce, we, I can't remember, am I supposed to stir this or not? Because it's not good to stir it when you're making it in the microwave. The microwave doesn't like you to stir things. So, <laughs> I'm, You probably should have looked that up before we started the live, huh? Yeah, I should have looked that up, and I didn't <laughs> write it on my notes to myself. Thank you for the likes, Tony. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think that this one I do stir it in a little. Not too much. Okay, don't really stir it. Thank you, Tony, for coming on here with us. Let's get this going. Like I said, this is my husband's favorite peanut brittle. We're going to put it in the microwave, and we're going to put it in here for four minutes. So why that's happening, I'm going to talk to you about some other stuff about candy. Um, candy is very, candy making is easy as long as you follow a few rules. One, like I said, have all your stuff out to start with. Two, the weather should be right. If it's pouring down rain, don't be trying to make candy. You should be sitting in your living room eating candy, not making it. Um, secondly, um, can't, don't ever use margarine. It's got some water in it, guys. Your candy will not turn out right. And for those of you that don't like to use butter, then I guess you can't make candy. I'm sorry. But butter, margarine's never going to turn out right in these recipes I'm showing you. It will turn out, you'll be disappointed, it won't sit up, it'll be sticky, it'll be, just don't do it, okay? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, also, measure everything, like I already said, I can't say it enough times. Have your stuff out, like I'm going to, while we're sitting here talking, I'm going to take the lid off my baking soda so I'm ready, and my vanilla, because when I get ready to put this stuff in, I need to put it in pronto, and I need to put it in quickly. You got your spoon ready? Right here. You're going to measure with that? Oh, no. Oh, no. I have a measuring spoon. It's right here. Right here, guys. So, um, we are going to add, after it comes out in four minutes, um, we are going to, um, shoot, add the nuts in and microwave for another four minutes. So, that cooks our nuts, okay, because you use raw nuts. Don't use toasted. And um, then after that, we're going to take it out and... What am I going to do? Oh no, I'm going to mix, then I'm going to cook it for another three and a half to four minutes. Guys, you only cook it till it turns golden, okay? If you cook it past light, golden color, it will be dead, okay? Because sugar continues to cook once you take it out and you put it in the pan. So don't take it to the color you think you want it at, only golden, okay? At that time, we're going to add a tablespoon of butter and a teaspoon of vanilla which, oh, <laughs> sorry, I use pure vanilla, um, 
because it's made from actual vanilla, whereas um, imitation vanilla is made from wood pulp, and they both have alcohol in them, guys, so just use the real stuff. It's worth buying. Don't use the imitation stuff. Then we're going to add, as soon as we mix that in, then we're going to add our baking soda, and then that just makes it foam up and make it really light like honeycomb, and so then we'll pour it onto here oh, and let it cool. That's what we're making. And this is what makes it the honeycomb, yes. <laughs> So that is the steps to what we're going to do. This is a microwave nut crunch. I don't, we don't call it peanut, peanut brittle. It comes from our Uncle Ronnie. His sister actually had this recipe and passed it down to him. She's no longer with us. And Uncle Ronnie has made it for years and years and years. And my husband's like, can you please get his recipe? I love that stuff. And Uncle Ronnie's not able to make it anymore. So now, now I'm going to make it. Hopefully it turns out right, guys. Cross your fingers that I do Uncle Ronnie good. I don't want to mess it up. So I'm going to give him a hot pad because glass can get really, I don't know if you can see in there or not. Oh, yeah. It's bubbling. You can kind of see in there. We won't show them too much of the <laughs> dirty microwave. Yeah, don't look at my dirty microwave. I made supper earlier, guys, and I had to clean everything off so I could do candy because <laughs> uh, I wanted to feed the family so they wouldn't have to eat late because, you know, it's not good for your body to eat right before you go to sleep. Although a lot of us do it. So we have 12 seconds left. As you can see, this is going really, really quick. Um, I like to make candy. Um, my grandmother always made Christmas candy. We're not making any of her recipes tonight. But my grandmother always made... Hold on, let's take this out. Stir it up. I guess I should hold it. Probably. So you don't splatter us with hot candy. Candy, yeah. Okay. Let's hope it turns out right. Now we're gonna add in our nuts. It's gonna be good. I love macadamia nuts. I use this whole thing because it takes a cup and this bag is just one cup, so I was like, perfect. Okay, we stir macadamia nuts in. I should have probably sometimes I spray I, with oil yeah with oil with Pam to keep the candy from sticking I should have done that let me get a knife I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret I've never made this before I'm making it first time my husband's made it and he doesn't like to cook that much so guys it has to be easy Okay, let's put it back in the microwave. This time for we're gonna set it for four minutes. We're gonna watch it because we don't want it to get um, too brown. I lost some of my sugar here. I want I should put that in there. Hold on. Some. Let's hope this turns out right. Okay. So fingers crossed, Uncle Ronnie used to make it. I hear it's foolproof, nobody can mess it up, but if someone can, be me. So, let's um, continue on. So anyway, this, this recipe has been um, in my husband's family for quite, for quite a few years and everybody loves it. I like to make candy, as I was saying, because my grandmother always made candy and she would start about the end of October. And she had these, you know how we used to get coffee in metal tins, metal cans? Not anymore. We get them in K-cups. <laughs> Grandma would keep those and clean them out, and then she would stack her candy in there as she'd make it and write on the top what kind of candy was and put it in her deep freeze. So whenever you go to Grandma's from October to March, you could get in her freezer and get any kind of Christmas candy you wanted. Divinity, fudge, peanut brittle. Oh, she made all kinds of fudges, and she would make... Um, peanut brittle and everything and it was just the most let me check this nope still going along there looks fine um, she was always she always made the best stuff guys so I highly recommend um, <laughs> making candy so your family or your co-workers can have wonderful memories of you making candy and bring it in now I, I'm sorry I want to keep an eye on this because I really don't want to burn it and I think I was supposed to mix it up to start with, so let's hope that you, didn't mess it up. You did mix it up. Did I? Yeah. I didn't combine it completely, though. 
Well, we'll see. Well, we'll see. Yeah, this is the first time you're making it, so we'll see I how mean, it goes. Starting, it's looking <clears throat> like it's looking like candy in there. Yeah, it's bubbling up, yeah. right? Yeah, it's bubbling all through the whole thing, so it must be okay. It's a little cool in here, guys. Um, up here in New England, we're running about mm, today about 30. Eight degrees, so it's a little chilly outside, and I keep my house about 60 because I like it cool because of the air conditioning I used to have in Texas. So I kind of like you know, like that way. So I have to wash the candy because it's going to set up quickly. Let's look at it. Uh, I'm not turning yet. How do you know when it's turning? It will start turning, you will, can look in there and you'll be able to see the whole mass will start to turn a color. Right now it's um, Starting just, to smell it. Yeah, and I smell the no, no, nuts starting to, to toast. Let's see. No, it's not a light golden color yet. Just, Are we ruining it by opening it so much? No, you're supposed to check it. It's not going to ruin it. Um, if you did it in the, on the stove top, you'd be stirring this whole time, guys. This whole time that I'm sitting here just chitter chatting with you, you'd be doing this in a pan and hoping to God it didn't stick on the bottom. So look, I mean, and you have to take it to hard crack stage. And let me tell you guys, hard crack stage is, let me look on my candy thermometer. Hard, oh, old eyes are not good. Hard crack stage is 300 degrees. So that's that's a long ways with candy. It, can, it takes quite a while to get hard crack stage. I made some caramels the other day that were handmade caramels and I dipped them in chocolate with little cons on top and salt and those took forever to cook. Let's check this guy. Ooh, I think that's golden. What do you think? Oh that? yeah, that's looking more golden. Careful. I think, that, I think this is golden. Okay, take it out, and now we're going to add the vanilla and the butter. One tablespoon of butter, one teaspoon of vanilla, and we're going to stir it up. Let's see how gold that is very golden. Look at that. That smells amazing. Yeah. I can smell the macadamians. Get the butter all stirred in there. And now we're gonna add to that one teaspoon of baking soda. And you can kind of see it reacting with the candy. And now we take it and we put it out on our pan. See how foamy it is from the baking soda going into it? Mm -hmm. And then you're going to want to spread it around real quick. Get a, sp get a knife. You need to wait about 30 minutes to break it up. I'm messing up my surface. Oh well. It'll still taste delicious. It will. Now, you can make this as many batches as you want, but I recommend making, in, on candy, I don't recommend doubling candy recipes. I recommend you make them each time. So, you can see this makes a small batch, but it, peanut brittle, as we all know, is very um, sweet. <laughs> it was just sugar and corn syrup and yeah. then some nuts. So Yeah, it's very sweet, so you only need a small piece of it. So there we go. I think that's as thin as I want to go. But there, it's going to sit for 30 minutes and then we can break it up. So hopefully, I don't cook candy so fast we don't get, you guys don't get to see it. I'm sure we'll, 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 we'll see. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sure you'll see it. Okay, let's move on and let's make the spice. They can always follow you and then you can post a video with a recap showing all the candy fi finished and broken yeah, up. Yeah, I could. Um, so now we're going to move on to, let's move this guy. We're going to move this guy over to the side. Let me smell it. Oh, guys, that's heavenly. The macadamias, I don't like peanuts real well, so that really sits, that really sets with me really well. Okay, let's get clean the sticky stuff off of here. Since we all know how much I like sticky. Oh, I, hold on, I gotta go dish rag. Right? That's just never gonna go for me. Okay. Here we go. Let's clean this up. 
because I don't want to stick to everything. Alrighty. Now we're going to make candy nuts. And I'm going to tell you guys, this is one of my husband's favorites. He loves candy nuts. They're extremely simple. And from start to finish takes about... Ooh, did I put how long to put it in there? <laughs> oh, seven minutes. Start to finish. Okay, now this one, we are going to put the sugar in. Half a cup. In a glass microwave dish. Right here. We're going to add four tablespoons of water. We are not going to stir it. Do not stir. I repeat, do not stir. And we're going to put the microwave for seven minutes. Hope you have seven minutes of content to talk about, Mom. Well, I guess I'm going to learn. <laughs> Hold on, guys. <laughs> okay. Now, I can talk about first. We're going to put pecans in it, but you can use any pecan, any nuts. You can use walnuts, cashews, macadamia nuts, anything you want. Now, I do like them spiced. My husband likes them spiced. You don't have to spice them, but we are going to spice ours with cinnamon, okay? And when you do that, you also have to add a teaspoon of water. So I'm going to get a teaspoon of water measured out so when it's time to do it, I'm not like going, where's my teaspoon of water? Because this also goes very quickly. You need to prep a pan to put them on to cool. So I, like I said, I prefer parchment paper because then I don't have to add more grease to my candy. Uh, if you use tin foil, you do have to oil it with butter, okay? Just a heads up on that. So this is a really simple, we're gonna put a fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon and two, another teaspoon of water and then we're gonna add the pecans into it. Um, we do not, we do not cook it anymore after that. When we mix it together, we just put it onto here. That's all we do, okay? It's very easy, very simple. Um, we want our sugar to be lightly golden, okay? Because it's gonna candy them. Um, these, these pecans are really good to use on top of salads. You can just eat them, which this cup and a quarter of pecans that we're making with this recipe, my husband will probably consume tonight. <laughs> you better not. I want some too. Um, they're really good, guys. They're just really good. They're nice to take in your lunch as a little treat, you know, in your purse or in your backpack to school or in your lunchbox or in your desk. Um, you get the picture, right? They're good anywhere. And think of it this way. You have that nice little... You can also use cardamom if you want to instead of cinnamon or nutmeg or whatever. Um, you got protein with your sugar. So it's okay. Because, you know, there's less carbs than there is protein when you eat one of these so <laughs> okay so that's my mouth you know what uh, uh, shoot me oh <laughs> so this is one of the favorites but i put it on a uh, salad at thanksgiving i made these and i put them on the salad and i had um just like leaf lettuce and pecans and cranberries and orange say um mandarin orange segments and then you had a citrus dressing and then goat cheese oh guys that was to die for i could i just would have eat i almost just ate only that for thanksgiving because i got like everything i wanted because i'm not a huge thanksgiving food person but yeah these candy pecans are the cat's meow you do want them um they make a good thing like if you have a well if you're having a mixer for Christmas and you're going to do drinks, you could have these on a tray. Like a charcuterie board. <clears throat> yeah, on a charcuterie board or anything like that. They'd be perfect for um, entertaining or just like having them in little bowls on the table. I can look in at this. I don't need to turn it off. Yeah, it's doing what it's supposed to. Um, <laughs> it's sugar and water. Getting sugar hotter. and water, guys. Okay, so something I want to tell you about sugar. Sugar is... Um, if you do not get rid of all the crystals of sugar, okay, it's so like when you make simple syrup, it always says heat until you see, have no sugar granules left. The reason for that is if you have one speck of crystallized sugar, you know, these little things in here, you can kind of see on my finger, one, one speck of those guys. And what will happen is after when your candy's cooling, it will actually 
reform into sugar and that's what makes your candy grainy. They don't make your ruin your fudge. It'll ruin any candy that you're making. So it's highly important that your sugar is completely melted to make good candy. So for those of you who've tried to make candy in the past and had a problem, that's probably what your problem was. <laughs> you didn't cook it long enough. Let me see. Oh, yeah, that's looking perfect. Look at that color. I mean, look at that. Guys, if you want to make a really nice, these three candies you can make and put in a little box and give to your co-workers, excellent Christmas gift. You know, just get yourself, I'll show you. Get yourself some of these, you know, little cupcake things and put them in your, in a tin, a small tin, and you can put like some fudge in one and you can put, so you can separate the kinds out. And then you can make that, it makes a really cute gift for neighbors, co-workers. Pretty cheap too. Yeah, and teachers. I mean, teachers at school. I mean, it's a great, who doesn't like Christmas candy? Tie it up with a little bow. I mean, that's what I'm, you know, I highly recommend it. Um, candy doesn't last at my house long enough to go as a gift. So if I make it, it has to go in the gift a immediately. You have to tell us that it's a <laughs> gift. Yes, but they're just like, you know, Mom, you could make some more. <laughs> you could make some for us. It only took you seven minutes. Now she knows my secrets, guys. My, I, I need a new photo. I need a new filmer. Someone who doesn't live with you. <laughs> Someone that doesn't know all my secrets. I can cook in silence in my house, and when they're gone working, and and they don't know. I can say that it took me all day, and for all they know, it did. And I could be in there watching cooking shows with eating bonbons and drinking coffee, for all they know. Let's see how we're doing. Oh, it's looking perfect. Okay. It's almost oh, there, it's guys. It's there. It's bubbling up. Yep, it's almost there. Let me get my pot holder here so I don't burn myself. I'm trying to cut down on burning myself. Um, so, what was I going to say? We were talking about sugar. Oh, we were talking about sugar. I, I hope some of you got uh, sugar. We're finished with sugar, guys. Just make sure it's incorporated in simple syrups or otherwise. The simple syrup reminded me. I made the cranberry simple syrup a few times back and I posted it. Guys, that is so delicious. I I have served that to everyone at the house when they come over for holiday drinks. It is highly recommended to have that cranberry simple syrup. Mixes with vodka, gin. I don't think I'd put it with tequila or bourbon, but you know, you could try I it. feel like you could do a tequila drink with it, like okay. a cranberry tequila sunrise. <laughs> yes, and then you could freeze your um you could freeze your cranberries and put them in there or put them on a toothpick. Oh, guys, look at that beautiful golden color. Oh, wow. That is perfect. Okay, now we got to move quick, guys. It's time to move quick. I'm going to put a quarter of a teaspoon of cinnamon in it, but I want more because I think it needs more, so I'm putting a half. Oops. And then we're going to add our one bit of water. And now we're going to add our nuts and coat them good. And you can see how sticky they are. Oh, look at that, guys. Look how it smells so good. I love cinnamon. I can, really wish you could smell through TikTok. I know, guys. I, maybe they did a thing where you can put it on your thing and it's like scratch and sniff. <laughs> okay. Once again, I forgot to spray my thing. Guys. Sorry, I even was like going to remind you and then I forgot. Do not try to touch this until it cools. It will burn you. We're going to break it apart once it cools. Look at how beautiful those are. And I'm going to tell you guys, the last time I made these, I made them wrong. And I actually had... What I was just telling you about the crystallization, I had that happen last time I made these candy pecans, but they were still good. I was gonna say, they still tasted delicious. Yeah. They just were a little grainy. Yeah. Gonna open them up a little so they, they can cool faster. I Guys, think I could have done them in a slightly bigger bowl. Maybe. I actually made it in a bigger bowl than I recommended. Oh, really? Yeah. I just felt like you could have gotten like covered easier and like stirred up easier. Well, I feel like they're pretty covered now. Oh, I guess I was just looking at that one naked one. He's he's not naked on the bottom. 
Just on top. You sunbathing. <laughs> he doesn't care. Okay, we're gonna set. Look at this, guys. We got these two are done. And that was done in. This took how many? How many minutes to make? Um, eight and a half. About eight and a half, and seven. this took seven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. Do you have something not not related for people who don't like nuts? Um, if you don't like nuts. We're gonna make fudge. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you, this recipe actually comes from my husband's Aunt Carrie, who lives in Pennsylvania. And I wanna say huge thanks out to Aunt Carrie for sharing this recipe with us. She's made this for years and he absolutely loves it. We had the recipe and lost it in our move and she sent it to us again. So these two recipes come from my husband's side of the family. Now we're gonna move on to fudge, which is my mom's. I'm gonna show you guys. This is her cookbook she got when she got married in 1962. Look at it. It's a mess, guys, look at this. So I had to come in here and I found her candy recipe. Where is it? Hold on, I don't read upside down very well. So this is my mom, you can see all these are out of here. So we're making this one. This is the fudge recipe my mother's made for years. It's called Price Fudge. And I make it, she made it with, she loved walnuts, but I don't like nuts in my fudge, so I'm not going to make it. And she also used to make the brownie, the blonde fudge. So we are going to make it, but you can see my mother used this cookbook a lot, and I treasure it. I tried to find another one with the same edition, and I bought it, and it's not the same. <laughs> It's not the same edition. I never have been able to find the one from 1962. So you can see this one's been duct taped together, but it's precious to me. So, first things first. Now, remember we talked about the problem of sugar. So to keep your fudge from going grainy, to start with, take a cube of butter. Once again, butter, not margarine, guys. And you're gonna you're gonna do the whole inside of your kettle. And what that's gonna do is help keep the butter from getting granulars up on the side of the kettle. Um, and use a heavy bottom one. It keeps it from going up on the side and forming a crystal, which is gonna ruin your fudge and turn it into grainy. So we don't want that to happen. Nobody wants to eat. You wanna eat smooth, silky fudge. Now, fudge can be done many ways. We're making plain fudge today. Um, I am using dark chocolate chips because I prefer dark chocolate. Plus, guys, the heart doctor says it's better for you. So you can eat the whole pan. <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? I did, didn't I? I hope my doctor's not watching. Okay, so we got the whole inside rubbed with butter. Don't forget your spatula. I won't. I'm going to have to use it. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. You're not going to rub it with butter? <laughs> oh, yes, I need to rub my spatula. <laughs> That's what I was trying to remind you, even. Oh my goodness, guys, it's a good thing I have a great assistant who knows my mind, which is all over the place. Okay, you can be ADHD and still work in the kitchen. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're going to add, let me find my recipe, four cups of sugar in here. And then we're gonna add a cup of butter. You wanna get on this side? Of yeah, that's, that's a better side. A cup of butter and a can of evaporated milk. Some of you may not know what this little nifty thing is. I was, I wanna know what that is, that's cool. You put it on top, take it off. If you gotta save it, you can put it back on and put it in the fridge, but it gives you a hold of pour and a hold of vent. And there you go. You don't have to, use, otherwise you have to use a can opener and you make a horrible mess. So this is a much easier method. Or if you just need a little bit. I think you're at the angle that your eyes too. <laughs> yeah. You need yeah, if you only need to use a little, you can use this to put back on. It's called a milk cap. Um, I don't know. I grew up with them. If you don't have one, you can buy them different places. Yes, I know. Boy, I'm aging myself tonight. <laughs> so my mother used to make fudge because she loved fudge. My dad didn't like fudge. That's why she, he didn't like chocolate. So she would make it, and she loved walnuts. And I do not like walnuts. They make my tongue break out. <laughs> they do, I get little blisters on my tongue, it's so. You could just say you're allergic. I'm a, well, 
So people don't think blisters are an allergy. Well, they don't have to listen to them. Who cares? Why are you changing your vocabulary based on dumb people? <laughs> I don't know. So that's the way it would look if it went in the, uh, if I had needed to put it back oh, in the refrigerator. Sorry. And it sticks down in there, so it stays on there, as you can see, pretty good. But it will Whoa. fall off if you turn it over. But so it much easier. It blocks it. So yeah, and it you keeps keep it from it. getting stuff in it. Okay. We are going to now turn this on medium. You need a candy thermometer to make to make fudge, okay? We're going to stir this and you're going to put that on the side of your kettle. You do not want it do not have it touching the bottom. So you need to bring it up a little. You don't want it touching the bottom. And I don't really need it in to start with because I already know it's not even close. So yeah, you can stick it in there when it's Yeah. As long as you're not going to burn yourself when you're putting it on there. No. It comes off anyway when you're cooking. So we, now this is going to cook here. We're going to have to cook this to um, softball stage, okay? Um, softball stage on your candy is 236 degrees, I believe. Yeah, you can see it right there. I can't, but maybe they can. <laughs> <laughs> 236 degrees. You can also, if you don't have a candy thermometer, Yes, you can still make candy without a candy thermometer. Get yourself a ball, a, a bowl of cold water, and you drop some in. And if it forms a softball, then it's softball stage. Oh, that's why they call it softball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if it's so, if it's soft, if you got, need to take it to hard crack, when you drop it in, it'll in the cold water, it'll crack, and that's hmm. crack, crack stage. So um, that's just a little tip. Guys, these aren't that expensive. Buy one. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it just makes it easier. Yeah. Okay, so I don't have to stir it constantly, but I do want to stir it rather frequently. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, I took my pan. I have a nine by nine pan. I mean, nine by thirteen. You can use a nine by nine, but I don't like my fudge that thick, so I'm using a nine by nine. I did put parchment paper in here. I am going to butter the bottom of this, or try. You <laughs> kind of got crazy with the parchment paper there. I want it, okay, I know it looks like a lot of parchment paper, guys, but here's the reason. I want to be able to pick it up out of there to uh, cut it. That's smart, yeah. There is, there is reasons for my insanity at times. I did fold it all nice, but it, I messed <laughs> it, it unfolded. All up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I you know what? It. Okay. We're so here we for the realness. Marshmallow, cr marshmallow. <laughs> you can get marshmallow cream up here. We get what's called marshmallow fluff, guys. I, I'm just, I'm just like over it. I just don't even <laughs> what? There was no cream. No, they don't sell it up here. They only sell this stuff. And you know why? Because they eat it on a peanut butter sandwich. Yeah, guys. That's not how they do it up here? This sounds so disgusting. Well, we don't really like marshmallows that much. So here it is. We're gonna use the whole thing. Um, in it which is a lot in my opinion but here we are and we also are gonna put, we're making candy the whole we thing are. is sugar we're making two cut we're gonna put two cups of chocolate chips here we got two cups of chocolate chips and we're also going to add one teaspoon of vanilla better find the vanilla okay here's our vanilla and that's all that goes in fudge guys that's really? it so sugar butter, evaporated milk, marshmallow cream, and chocolate chips. Now this is the this is a much creamier fudge. The original fudge that people used to make in the old times had two cups of sugar, three-fourths of a cup of milk, two ounces of unsweetened chocolate, a dash of salt, one teaspoon of corn syrup, <laughs> two tablespoons of butter, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Guys, that is very difficult to pull off and not make it grainy and make it creamy. I'm just going to say. This is a much easier fudge to make. So, I'm going to stir this. We know we're not close to the edge, close to it, because you can see the butter still floating in there. <laughs> what? what? Butter floating still means that it's cold? I know. <laughs> Who knew? Okay, a couple things I want to tell you about fudge. If your fudge is too soft, not soft enough, I mean. It's firm, too firm. You can get in there with your hands and, and um, 
play with it like play-doh and it'll soften it and you can put it pat it into your pan okay that's one thing you can do if it's too firm that's a problem add a half a cup of milk to it reheat it recook it restir it and then pour it okay so those are two things you can do to fix any major mess up fudge malfunction <laughs> any fudge malfunction your only other fudge malfunction that you can have is grainy and i've already talked about that we buttered this baby and we buttered our spoon you do not want any sugar left okay guys no sugar see how it keeps it from getting up there and i'm going to scrape this side to make sure it doesn't get sugar i hate grainy fudge i love it when it's smooth Guys, I just went to a candy factory this last week. When a, a, a guy that used to work for me in my landscape business came to visit with his fiance, and I took them to a candy factory, and they make the best fudge. It's called Mayan fudge, and it oh, is so spicy, but it's delicious. I have never made any. I should try to figure it out. I think it has cayenne in I it. I bet you could figure out how to make spicy fudge. Oh, I love spicy things, guys. Oh, absolutely adore it. People in New England, not so much. So... I'll have to. Your Texas roots. Yeah, that's my Texas. That's the 20 years of my life in Texas has made me like spicy food. But my mom always liked spicy food, and she was from Iowa. <laughs> no, she was born in California. I was you can't say trust she's California. <laughs> mom, really? this recipe that I'm using of my mom's, you know, she was born in California in rush hour and delivered by a police officer. So, you know, you can't try. She's a little out there. So. <laughs> You know, when you have a mom that was delivered by a police officer and named after the police officer, I might add, um, you never know. His name was Charlie and my mother's name was Charlotte. So I think that's the cutest story ever. I don't have anything that interesting. I was just born. <laughs> <laughs> and neither do either one of my kids. I was going to say we were just born. <laughs> you were just born. <laughs> Olivia was born in a snowstorm. She was born in a blizzard in, in Nebraska, so... I have lived in eight states, so I have a little bit of everything from me in me. Oh, look at our butters disappearing. Yeah, it's almost yeah. getting there. So and once the butter's gone, I'll put the thermometer in again and check the temperature. You checking that? This yeah, is just looking to see. Let me let me check. Showing this. the people how the nuts are doing, <laughs> chilling over here. The nuts over here are being nutty. Yeah. Oh, this is already cooled down almost. Maybe we could break it apart. Um, if you don't think so, we can wait. But yeah. Cool, so we can I can break it. While we're oh. waiting for the butter and I stuff. I can show you guys how to break it. Take a butter knife. This is how my grandmother taught me. Take it and turn it over. And for those of you that are ladies out there, your nails will stay intact. Now... There you go. I know my camera lady wants mm. to try it. I was going to say, think, it smells delicious. I think you should try it. I wanted to tell you how long this will last in the refrigerator, what, where to store this. Go ahead. Hold I, on, I was trying to get a good shot of it, but I can't get it to focus on my <laughs> when I'm holding it. Okay. She's tasting it. Mmm. Survey says? They're really good. Good. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Tastes like macadamia nuts. Oh, sorry. I was not. I was so good. I was like just <laughs> sh shooting the camera off into nowhere. <laughs> okay. So, guys, storing this. Let's talk about that. It will keep 68 weeks in an airtight container on the counter at room temperature, and you can keep it for three months in the refrigerator in an airtight container. You talking about the nuts or the the, the peanut butter? Oh, okay. I mean the no. This is microwave nut crunch. Mm. Um, peanut brittle. Basically, if it had um, peanuts in it, it would be peanut macadamia brittle. Macadamia and brittle. <laughs> um, do not put it in the refrigerator. It will get sticky, okay? And it will not stay hard. So um, if you want it in smaller pieces, you can. But I think this is about the right size right here. Yeah, and This is the best. I mean, my grandmother was a smart one. She was a smart cookie. I was going to say, that was like really easy. to. I've never <laughs> seen it broken up like that before. Okay, we can start breaking our nuts up. And they're going to break apart like this. I'm just going to break them apart. Some of them won't. <laughs> Some of them will be clusters. They could be nut clusters. So these are break these break apart nicely too. 
And it's okay if they're clustered like that. You don't have to worry about You just about want them kind of bite-sized. Yeah, you just want them so that nobody's walking off with a hunk like this. Because <laughs> that would be my <laughs> husband. A, I was going to say that, or like <laughs> niece and nephews what going on. Yeah. Oh. Okay, Isaiah, you want to try these? Yeah, I'll try one. Okay, I've already tried all this stuff before, so I know i got to stir this real quick while she's... Ooh. Oh, I'm trying to pick one, and i got to be careful. Delicate choices. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Those are good, those too, are really aren't good. they? I, I almost like those better. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay, we... They're not as sweet, because I like the cinnamon in them. Yeah. We are at about 180 degrees. So we're getting there, guys. Oh, yes. Thank you uh, uh, for reminding us. We had a comment to say, don't forget about the fudge. <laughs> <laughs> we were distracted with the nuts. <laughs> don't worry, guys. I was paying attention. I know. I, I, I am... Um very notorious for cooking multiple things at a time and i forget that not everybody likes to cook like that's what me. the adhd cooking comes in yes uh we are at 210 degrees and <laughs> rising so i'm gonna put i need to put this over no i'm gonna do it right here okay when i i take it off i'm gonna do it here it'll be easier do you mean to do anything no it's not ready yet okay it's bubbling though. Yep, and I'm keeping an eye on it. Don't worry. We are about 23 degrees from being done, ready to make finish the fudge off. Guys, this is so quick. This is a lot quicker than the caramel. Yeah. But I think the weather on the caramel might really mess no, this up. No, caramel takes a long time because it has to go to um, softball state. I mean, um... It has to go to 250 degrees. Oh, so just the higher temperature that it has mm -hmm. to get to mm -hmm. than candy. Because caramel is a little bit harder than fudge. Interesting. Even when it's like a... You can do caramel at 236 degrees, same stage, but it'll be really, really soft and sticky. And I was wanting to dip them mm. in chocolate and add pecans gotcha. and, and salt on top. And la I might add, those are delicious. I may make them sometime and videotape it. I did not this time. Okay, we are at 220. We have 16 degrees to go, guys. You don't have to stir it constantly, but when it starts getting to this temperature, I like to so I don't have any burnage. Um, it's a personal preference. Also, I have a, a gas stove, and I don't trust it. <laughs> yeah, it's burned stuff on the bottom before. It has. It has. <laughs> um, like when I'm making marshmallows and I have to make my, <laughs> my syrup to make marshmallows, um, it does that, so... I am this I'm gonna tell you guys that I'm really excited to get back making candy again I have not made candy in over probably eight years or more first of all my I was taking care of my mother and then she passed away and so I just lost my kiss Christmas mojo and it's just barely coming back so you guys are benefiting from my Christmas mojo coming back and I like to decorate and I I have three trees in the house <laughs> I'm not well, as, Delilah's making sure that that changes. <laughs> I still have the tree. One of my trees has been completely de decorated by my little lovely eight pound Siamese, Delilah the Deadhead Kitty. And you guys have seen her occasionally. And um, I used to put one in every room, but I only have three in the house this year and I have one on the front porch. So I, I, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm getting there. I'm getting back. Plus, I, the girls made me downsize. And I only have nine boxes of Christmas decorations instead of 50, so I may not ever do that again. <laughs> I love Christmas decorations, and I really had to make myself not buy anything. And the, this apron I have on, in fact, my mother gave to me one year for Christmas. I love it. And if you look, if you could see, there's stains all over the front of it because <laughs> I wear it all the time at Christmas. Okay, we're almost to 2.30, and that means we have about, and we have to go to 2.36, so we will have, we have about eight more degrees to go. You can see, this is really smelling good. Yeah. Even, just for really sugar, good. milk, and butter, it smells delicious, <laughs> I must mm -hmm. say. So, 
Yes, if you were my neighbors, you probably, a lot of my neighbors get stuff from me. When I make stuff, if I make too much, I take it to the neighbor's house. I am going to make some pecan pie bars, and I will post those up because last time I made them, they turned out so good. I want to share the recipe with you guys. So I am going to be making those this week probably again. So did Olivia end up liking those even though she wanted the Yes, my daughter pie? was like so upset because I didn't make pecan pie. But now everybody's like, you can make those for Christmas. The pecan bars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, they're easy. They just but my husband wanted more sticky, but the sticky the sticky part of the pecan pie um, soaks into the cookie crust that you use. Sorry guys, I'm trying to watch the thermometer. Because you can go from nothing to something in a heartbeat with candy and it takes requires now you can see that i don't have any sugar crystals anywhere and that's highly important guys because when you pour your fudge into the pan you do not want sugar crystals so and i like to use this you can use a wooden spoon or a, a, a spatula that's not going to not going to melt do you is anything, is stuff, does that ever have a reaction with metal spoons? Um, it doesn't, but it's not, you don't want to use metal because metal stays cold mm. and it gets cold really fast. So it can, um, you can end up freezing up, um, making your candy seeds. Mm. Also something about chocolate guys, make sure there's no water in your chocolate, no water in the cup you put your chocolate in. It will make it seize in your fudge. Water is very bad for chocolate. Very, very bad. Very. Don't do it. That's why you, when you, if you wash strawberries before you dip them in chocolate, it always goes wrong. Yeah. Well, that and because strawberries are sponge and they will um, soak up the water and then they let it loose when you dip it in the chocolate, the heat. And so then they go, get all drippy and nasty. And then it will make the rest of your chocolate um, seize. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, don't wash them. Um, I know everybody's going to gross out. Nobody washes mushrooms or strawberries because they soak, they are sponges and they will soak up the water. So buy yourself a mushroom and strawberry brush and brush, the, uh, brush them clean. And now that everybody probably threw open their mouth a little bit, get over it. That's the way it's done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess if you're worried about the pesticides, then buy organic. Even that, though. Yeah, there is still pesticides. They're just organic. Well, they're grown next to the... <laughs> they're grown and next nobody door. told bugs that they couldn't go from one place to another. Okay, guys, we're almost there. We're at 1. We are at 2.30. And we need to go 6 more degrees. My arm's tired. <laughs> Tell but, me about it. I've been holding my hand up all this. Oh, all I'm so <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's our workout for the night. <laughs> Such a low, a low uh, impact. A it's low, low impact. <laughs> Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. You know, what is it like that Pamela Pumpkin dance you see on TikTok all the time? This, I don't know. This is, this, is, this is Kathy's cooking exercise. Stir to the left. Stir to the right. <laughs> don't let it stick. No grains allowed. Bend over, look in. We are making uh, some fudge, Tammy. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. And in here I have a cup of butter, four cups of sugar, and one can of evaporated milk. We're bringing it to softball stage. Making some basic fudge. And for those of you who just joined, I will be breaking this video, live video up into pieces and reposting it so that you can see it, um, see them in sections. Um, yeah, because it'll take a while for it to set up. Yeah. You won't be able to see this set up, but I will have pictures of it afterwards. Okay, we are all... Ooh. We're almost there. Almost there, guys. Just a gnat's eyelash away. And you can see it's turning colors, which is good. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. It's so fun okay, watching all the bubbles. Okay, we are at soft crack. Remove... Turn off the burner first because it's gas flame. Remove the pan. Could have used two. <laughs> I know. I could have. That would have been smart. Now. <laughs> don't panic. <laughs> Step one. Don't panic. 
Step one, remove from heat. Step two, add chocolate, cream, and vanilla. So we're gonna add our chocolate, two cups, chocolate chips, our whole entire can of marshmallow fluff, or marshmallow cream, if you're from another part of the country other than the East Coast where they have marshmallow fluff. I was like very confused, but then I realized I was in a different country, I mean a different state. <laughs> okay, you wanna get as much of this out as you can. And then we're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla, and then I'm gonna stir for my dear life and so it doesn't cool down and get seized. Okay. Take your candy thermometer out, grab a hold, and start stirring. And watch the magic, guys. Go down the marshmallow lane and through the forest. <laughs> it's over, pretty gross right over now. Over the chocolate chip forest lanes. <laughs> it smells delicious, though. It does. It smells great, and it's starting to look like fudge. I can see it in there. Now, this is a... Really important, guys, make sure you get your marshmallow cream completely incorporated. Otherwise, when you're eating your fudge, you will have little pieces of marshmallow fudge. Well, I mean, that's Lops. not bad if you want that. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> makes it kind of sticky, guys. Yeah, it's better if it's all fully incorporated. So as soon as I finish all this and I pour this into the pan, then I will tell you how to keep all three candies that we made. I'm losing hair. My daughter is taking it off me. Thank God it didn't get in the fudge. You know, marshmallow cream mixes in better than this. If you want to get me a, a wooden spoon, please. Yes, I you remember where they are. In the drawer over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you asked me and I like I suddenly for. Oh, sorry. I like literally forgot everything. <laughs> She's so, so involved in watching me make this. She totally didn't remember like, where what, we keep them. <laughs> what kitchen is this? Where am I? Am I, am I, on, am I in, yeah. So I'm going to use a spoon because I feel like it would be easier to get it mixed in. Yeah, I think you're right. And this is as much work out as, this is. Probably doing kettlebells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got strong arms. People always say, you're so strong. Well, this is why. Cooking. We'll do it to you. It's gonna get glossy, that's a good thing. You want it to have kind of a glossy finish on it. Do not stop stirring and pour until all your marshmallow cream or fluff is mixed in. And I use dark chocolate, which I prefer, but you can use milk chocolate in this too, or semi-sweet, whichever is your preference. Okay, it is all mixed in. Now, the fun part. We'll see if, if camera lady is, is able to pour, scrape this out when I get it over. Okay. Here. What am I using? This. I'm using that. Oh. <laughs> it's sticky. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, let me get it. Let me be on this side. Okay. I'm sorry. Showing all our, all our messy kitchen. Don't be looking at my kitchen, guys. I cook all the time, but I clean it. Oh, I saw some marshmallow that's not quite incorporated. Oh, no! Really? I missed it? It's okay. It'll be fine. It was just like one river. <laughs> one little stream. <laughs> one little stream? In the fudge river. Oh. In the fudge waterfall. Guys, this... <laughs> I feel like we're going Willy Wonka tonight. Or the elf. I feel more like the elf tonight. <laughs> Okay, I'm almost there. I know, almost. I know it's heavy, sorry. It is heavy, it's cast iron. I'm doing so, so bad. Either you get fast uh, fudge scraping or you get good camera work. You can't have to. Okay, it's good. <laughs> My husband will come in and look it out. Uh, we're just making basic chocolate fudge uh, that's supposed to be creamy and easy. This is my mom's recipe. So I'm gonna leave it in here and let it, you need to let it set up. It's gonna take probably 30 minutes to an hour before you can cut, guys. Um, storage of these kinds. Okay, once again, airtight container, two to three weeks 
I mean, 68 weeks on the counter in the freezer, three months, airtight. Do not put in the refrigerator, it will get sticky. Let's talk about these guys. One week in airtight container on the counter, three weeks in the refrigerator in airtight, or three to six months in the freezer. Fudge. Um, did I write that down? <laughs> did I look that up? Three months in the freezer and two to four weeks in the refrigerator. Don't put it, leave it on the counter. Um, it will not be good. So that is our three brown <laughs> Christmas Christmas candies. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to hear from many of you guys that try it. I love hearing your stories about cooking. Um, if I write something wrong, I'm sorry. I have a tendency to say one thing and write another. Believe what I say over what I write. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have. You guys, that's the end of our candy story for the night. Uh, catch you later next time when we come live.